So this is how you make chestnut trees. It is a tough day. It's a uh, sort of a combination of freezing rain and snow. Starting to stick to the ground, I guess. So I figured it would be as good a time as any today to show you guys how I make uh, chestnut seedlings. Some of the trees that I planted last go around were trees that I had sprouted in our apartment in Washington, D.C. when I was still living full time in D.C. Um, and I brought them up here when I moved up. But uh, most of them were uh, purchased from a couple of different orchards. But what I'm gonna try to do is actually sprout my own trees to be ready for next year at this time for replanting. To do that, uh, for chestnuts, you need to do something known as cold stratification. That means the chestnuts need cold to let the seed know that it's time to sprout. That's true for chestnuts, that's true for acorns, it's true for butternut. Uh, just a wide variety of different trees require this cold stratification. Now in nature, the cold stratification just happens by the seeds sitting on the ground and going through a winter cycle. Last year when I sprouted the trees, I actually did it in our refrigerator. If you want to see the video, I'll leave a link up top. Uh, it worked pretty well, but I had problems with mold and some of them just got gross and, and just didn't sprout. My buddy Akiva Silver, who's down at Twisted Tree uh, Orchard in New York, he has this uh, way of sprouting chestnuts, and so I'm actually gonna give his method a try this go around. The way his method works is this. You take your standard five gallon bucket. Our farm is built on these five gallon buckets. And what you do is you cut a hole in the bottom of the bucket, and then I put some plastic netting at the bottom of it. This way it's gonna prevent rodents from getting inside. Um, and I'm gonna just take this bucket. I already have this pre-dug hole. I'm going to drop it down there. And then I'm going to add some, some sand. You know, just like standard play sand. It doesn't have to be anything all that fancy. You can also use sawdust to do this method. Uh, I didn't have much luck actually locating sawdust, so that's how I ended up going with the sand. So I'm going to start with a layer of sand just on the bottom. So I got these chestnuts from an orchardist I know. Um, it's a couple pounds worth. Add some chestnuts. Add some sand. Spread them around a little bit. Get the sand in between the nuts. Sand works better, or sawdust works better, because it allows the moisture to uh, drain pretty well, but at the same time, it keeps them nice and cool and keeps them from drying out. It also, what I found is, it's a uh, less likelihood to have mold form, um, which generally is a risk. I'm also gonna add some water so that I can ensure that these things aren't too dry. What's nice about this in the open bucket model is it really allows you to match the earth's moisture and humidity, uh, but let's add some water because the sand is a little bit dry. That drained pretty nicely. Gosh, it's a lot of ice there. So then my next step is going to be to take the lid, close it up nice and good, nice and tight. I'm going to add this nice big rock. You don't want rodents in here feeling like they just hit pay dirt. So the last step I'll take, and I'm not going to do this today because it's so gosh darn miserable, is I'm going to cover up that area with some mulch. You know, I want to try to prevent it from over freezing too much. Also again, discourage rodent activity. 
um, and we'll go from there. You guys might have seen the video where I took a whole bunch of cider pulp and poured it out here. I'm hoping to sprout a bunch of apple trees uh, next year right here in this spot. And what I'll be doing in this spot here is actually planting all of those chestnut seeds that you just saw me bury. Um, I'm gonna dig them up and put them in the ground as soon as I can get a shovel into the ground and the hard frost is broken. You don't wanna wait too long because when the chestnut seed sprouts, it gets a little tail. That tail has a little bit of a risk of breaking and if you break that, you're gonna kill the plant. But I will be planting them all through here and I will let them grow for probably one or two years and just continue to plant them out into our permaculture orchard. And so that is how you make your own chestnut trees. It's really easy. I encourage anyone to give it a shot. It's worth a little bit of effort. Um, you can do it two different ways again. You can do it the way you just saw me do here today, or you can do it in your refrigerator. Watch this video to see that, or watch this video to learn more about our farm and what we're doing here. Or you can just subscribe. See you guys in the next video.